my channel uh, in this week's video. It, I think it's my favourite upcycle ever. I've been upcycling 11 years officially, maybe more. But um, I always get asked that question like, what's your favourite upcycle project that you've ever done? And I always find it really hard, like not never comes to my, to my mind. But this is it. This is my favourite project ever. Got a pair of curtains from eBay and I transformed it into something completely different. Um, I really hope you enjoy it. So these are the curtains that I picked up. I absolutely love them. There was loads of different options actually. I could have went loads of different ways, but I landed on these ones. Um, and I think they're really, really nice. I, Sanderson fabric is always one of those fabrics that is always kind of lasts the test of time. I think their patterns are really like uh, timeless and they work years later. Um, so I was delighted to find them. And I also had this little chair that I got about two years ago in a charity shop um, and it was a tenner. So like, I can't go wrong, I hope. <laughs> um, and the fabric is sitting into um, the chair by just those little kind of timber fold in that little groove. Um, so, I'm going to take it apart, but it's a really, really easy to take apart. Um, there's just two little screws on the back of this that I um, took out. Once they came out, um, the back panels just slid out really, really easy. So once I popped those out, it was just like uh, I took out the little dowels then um, out of the fabric. And then it was even easier. The base the base just slid out. There's no screws around holding that in place. So it's kind of nice that you could maybe make different patterns and then have it interchangeable. Um, I sprayed down the whole piece then with um, sugar soap and I left it for um, a few minutes and then once um, it broke down the dirt and grime, I gave it a quick wipe with a cloth. And then I decided to sand it. So I'm going to paint it. So I'm going to sand all the surface, sand, prime and paint. So I just went to do it with an orbital sander and a 120 grit sandpaper and I sanded all the flat surfaces. Now I wouldn't bring the sander down into the spools or anything like that because I could, uh, because it's an electrical sander, I could risk like taking off um, that kind of curve. So just, just the flat surfaces. Then um, I went in with a 120 grit sandpaper um, just to do all the other areas by hand. So you're just trying to make sure every piece of the wood is sanded so that the primer can cling onto it. And then I would do it with a tack cloth to remove all the dust from the piece as well so that there's no dust left when I am applying my primer. So I went in with Acres Hall and I used a light grey primer. I'm not sure what colour I'm going to paint it, um, but I just gave the whole piece um, a nice light prime. Um, so just make sure that I'm covering all the surface. And then once it's dry, I'll do the little scratch test to make sure that the primer is not coming off and there it's ready for paint. I didn't realize um, that this curtain head was like in two halves. There's the line, there's a sewing line in the middle of it, but it doesn't matter anyway because I don't need it. Um, but I just, the pattern on this fabric is just so gorgeous. Like still, um, I'm sure this is probably from the 1950s or 60s, um, but it's it would still works today, but I wanted to really modernize it as best I could without kind of losing the side of the fabric. So wanted to add, it, add something modern onto it, like to bring it up to date. Um, so I just laid out the two pieces of fabric. So it's great when, when you're upholstering and if you have the old piece of fabric, you can use it as a template if it comes off in one piece. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm just cutting this. I'm giving myself loads of room because I'm going to be printed onto it and I don't want to be really confined to, to like a certain piece of fabric. So I wanted to make sure that if I printed a little bit off or a little bit off centre or anything like that, that I had enough wiggle room to rectify it. Um, so when I was cutting this piece, I just brought it right up to, to that little seam edge and, and cut it. So I cut two panels for the front and the back. I'm going to print on both sides. Um, and also I'm going to print on the C part as well. So I'm going to cut um, the C part too. And then I'm going to add maybe a line in or something underneath. And that's just to straighten it. Um, like it is really good quality fabric. But I want to kind of make sure that when someone sits on it, it's got that little bit like it's extra strong. Um, so I'm just going to cut that shape. Now I've laid this down kind of with the rows in the center. But I'm not really worried about the, the pattern. The pattern's so gorgeous like that. 
it'll be lovely no matter what way I put it but I just kind of wanted to center the roses on the base part I used a Cricut machine to cut out um, letters that I'm going to put on a screen and screen print onto the fabric you could do this by hand this is um, you don't need a Cricut machine to do this um, and I, I just did it it was very simple I just typed it in and it cut out the letters on the vinyl for me but you could do this by hand it's, just, it's going to take you a little bit of extra time but um, you could do this by hand I'm also going to show you a quick little way as well if you don't have a screen let's say you don't want to screen print you've never done it before um, there's a, a kind of a, an easier way that you can do it as well I'm going to show you after I show you the screen printing section I'll put this anyway in, in the timestamps on the description so if you want screen print um, watch on and if you want to skip the screen printing part to another option then you can just um, skip onto that as well so this is my screen I have about five of these screens I've had them for absolutely years and um, I don't screen print a lot but I love it and um, so I am um, I have just the vinyl letters cut and I had to do them mirror image so because they're going to be sticking onto the screen and then when I'm flipping it over I'm going to be screen printing so it needed to be backwards it took me a little bit of while it took me a while to figure that out um, and I actually cut it the wrong way around at the start but um, sometimes it's hard when you're printing because you kind of have to go backwards so um, I'm just going to pull off the letters but I'm going to keep the letters um, to the side because they're great for mapping out or um, trying to figure out where exactly you want your letters to be so that you can line up your screen on top. I'm going to show you that now in a minute as well. So um, I'm just going to um, cut out around my letters and then I can seal off the rest of the screen with like cell tape um, or masking tape or whatever you have so that it doesn't seep through. So the only ink I want to seep through is through the letters that I'm creating. So I'm just mapping them out first. So I just took down um the m first you have to make sure that it's really stuck onto the screen that there's no bubbles there's no way that any ink is going to like seep in underneath anywhere um and so once the m is stuck down then i wanted to go in with the other letters this would be a little bit easier with transfer tape but i really don't have a lot of it left and i didn't want to waste it <laughs> so i just peeled it off and then i had to put on like the middle of the o and the b separate um so i'm just making sure that there's no bubbles or anything like that in it and once I have my lettering all done, then I can start blocking in the bits around it. So I just had scraps, any scraps that I have of the vinyls, um, I'm going to use here to block out um, the letters. So you just really have to make sure that no ink is going to seep through any of the screen, only your letters. So I've made all those mistakes before. So just make sure that there's... Um, no gaps and then I always go around to tape around the edge as well to make sure that nothing's going to seep out through so so you can use a screen print and ink um but you can also use just normal acrylic paint but you have to mix it with a printing medium um it wouldn't work just on acrylic uh paint its own so you need um the same part medium as you do paint so I had a little bit left at the end of this pot and I had a little bit left in the neon pink so I just thoroughly mixed the two of them together and then I tested it. I always like to test it first just to give myself an idea of how it might work out. So I just put a little bit on a sponge and onto the fabric. And I wanted this like vibrant neon letters. But obviously the pigment is really, really high in the neon. So I wanted to see what it would work out like. And it was quite faint. So I decided to use the neon pink as a drop shadow. And then maybe like another pink up on top. So I just actually used the the lining from the curtains as just a rag underneath um to protect my table um and then I placed down my fabric and I'm gonna put the screen on it. Now I've screen printed a few times over the years. It still it still scares me a lot. <laughs> so um I always hold my breath. I am unsure. I am afraid. Um so uh, like I've practiced loads of times I know how to do it so the only thing I think is take your time um, I always use a weight as well to like put my screen in place and on the other side of this as well I have two little brackets that I, I, I put onto the table so that my screen's not going to move because if your screen moves it's going to move everything move your fabric and the whole lot and it's going to be a bit of a nightmare so I am um, off camera I practiced this on one of the pieces and it worked out fine so um you just have to make sure you have enough um, ink on your squidgy when you're 
uh, screen printing. Um, so I'm just gonna put it over um, the fabric once and then you always go back over it as well just to make sure that you've you've got everything. So even from this, you can see the, the pattern of the fabric in underneath. So the neon pink is just a drop shadow. I think it works lovely, but I think another color on top of it is really gonna make a pop. So once this is dry then, I went in with my second color. Now it takes a little bit a while to dry. Um, that's where my impatience kind of <laughs> fights with me. So um, once it was dry, I laid it down and I, I lined it up. So you can see here um, that I've moved the bloom up a little bit. So um, you can see there's neon, you can see the neon printed underneath, but you can also see where I didn't get it as well. So this is gonna create like a, li a little drop shadow. So I'm hoping that it's going to be nice and bubblegum pink, bloom, drop shadow, neon pink. Um, so you can see here I missed the very, very end. Um, and I was freaking out a little bit. Um, but I just went back over the other side and I got it. So it seemed to work out fine. Um, but it's always really nerve-wracking. I don't know why, um, but I really enjoyed the process. So the reveal then when I pop this um, up is like, I love it. I love it. I'm doing a little dance there. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have bloom and then baby bloom on the seed part. And then I'm just moving um my screen up a little bit so that there's a little drop shadow. And those little um vinyls that I took apart are great for like lining up exactly where I want it to go. Um and I'd wash the screen as well and leave it dry. It takes a little bit of time in between each color. Um, so I, when I printed the neon pink baby, like drop shadow, I had to rinse off the screen, make sure all the ink was gone, and also the screen had to be dry. It takes so a little while, so if you're working on a few projects at once, it, it always seems to go a little bit quicker. Um, and then the Y on the baby part, um, I missed a little bit of it, so I just went to with a brush and it worked out fine, just to fill that in. Um, I tried to paint this uh, yellow and it didn't work. Um, I kind of regret painting it to be honest. I wish, I wish I had not painted it, but I think the, the the pink is still gorgeous. But I think it would have worked as well. Um, if I had just left a timber, but I'm a person that just wants to paint everything. Um, this is with uh Acres Hall and it's in the color boudoir and it's the finest eggshell it's a really really nice um paint to use and it's a really nice color it's lovely and creamy um and i find that this um paint is really hard wearing and it's made in tullamore in ireland so that's all good um so i just gave it um a coat i let it dry it and came back in gave it another coat and then i did a tiny little top up coat of any little areas that i've missed because there's so much in this chair there's loads of little awkward kind of nooks and crannies um, to get the paint into but um, this paint's got really nice coverage as well and if you don't have a screen or you don't want to screen print you can get the exact same effect using this stuff this is called freezer paper Um, it's unreal like it does a lot of kind of weird jobs Um, I got this in silks I'd say it's about 10 years ago so you just print off whatever you want like whatever word you want my printer was not working um so and you just pop it down you trace over the paper so the paper has got one side is shiny and one side is matte so the matte side should be facing you and the shiny side will stick onto the fabric so i just traced out the letter so you could do this with bloom or, like or whatever you're putting onto your um piece so i just kind of um roughly traced it out and then i'm going to cut out um the letter this works way better than a stencil could um, and I just cut out with a, with a blade, just cut out the outer layer of the bee and then um, you need to keep that bee because we need the inside parts as well. Um, and then I just iron that little piece onto my fabric. So I just have a little scrap here and I'm ironing it down. So remember the shiny side goes down onto the fabric and then I iron it on. So the iron kind of, it doesn't like glue it into place but it keeps it in place. So it's like there's some sort of a glue there. It just kind of attaches onto the fabric. So this allows you to add on ink and that it won't seep in underneath um and it stays in position but it also lets you add those details in the middle like um a stencil wouldn't so if i cut out the two little centers of the b and i just pop them into place and then i iron them and when i iron them on again that glue from that shiny side will stick them onto place um onto the b and when you're adding the ink you just have to be a little bit careful you also have to be a little bit careful when you're ironing it because the small little bits can kind of 
they stick to the iron or anything like that you can lose some of that detail um so just give it a nice gentle iron down and then it's kind of like glued onto the fabric so you could do this um with the drop shadow let it dry um, and do this again on um on the second bit so i just added that screen printing ink as well which is acrylic paint mixed with textile medium and i'm using a sponge and i'm going to dab um dab it onto where the bee is and I'm, again i'm trying not to lift those like middle parts i'm not being um not doing too fast in case i lift up the little middle bits um and i don't want to add too much fabric onto it as well because it'll take ages ages to dry so um, i'm just dabbing it on make sure that it's filling um the whole bee area and then i can uh, peel it back i would kind of leave the ink dry before i peel it back so then you just peel off the freezer paper um, and be careful when you're peeling off the middle sections you could use a tweezers if you need to do it when when the ink is a bit wet um but you're better off kind of leaving it dry uh before you do that but sometimes you kind of just want to see what it looks like um and then you just peel it back and it's it's really good it's really good stuff it works on fabric it doesn't work on like wood or any hard surfaces like that um it's more kind of soft surfaces um but it's handy so you leave the ink dry for 24 hours and then you have to um, iron the back of it to like lock in the ink. Um, I also like was trying to figure out exactly where I wanted the bloom to be. So I did it on the, the very back panel and on the front of the of the back. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and I just folded it and tried to get it into position. And um, it's really great to have the old piece of fabric to use as a template because you can really like line it up um, So this is just for the back panel. So um, What I like to do is press the iron in um, and measure it like that's how I measured it So I pressed the edges in and ironed it so that and then I can just easily put it through the sewing machine In my stash as well, I had a really nice neon pink thread Um and that's kind of sparked off the whole neon like little drop shadow neon but then once i was going through my stash i also found just enough neon pink piping as well by spinding so i said it would be nice to like edge it off and it would bring in the drop shadow of the pink and also modernize it a little bit so i was so excited when i found that it was great to be able to work off the old piece of fabric i, I think it would be very difficult to work out how much fabric you need it just because it folds around the back and it slots in so i was it was great to have the old piece and then with my dusty sewing machine i sewed on the edge with the neon thread as well um so i just sewed on the piping right on the edge i think it looks really cool and then i put it all back together and i went out into a rapeseed field and I took some pictures of it and some videos and I absolutely love it. It's hands down one of my favorite projects ever. I think it turned out really well. It turned out better than what I had pictured in my head. Um, and it's just fun and modern. And like, look what you can do with a curtain, a curtain like, I love it. Um, I also committed and did the back as well. So bloom on the back and it also folds up um, and you can like take it away. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, in next week's video, it's organising my art room. So tune in for that. It took me years to get it completely organised. I think I'm there. Um, description of blog post, etc, etc. I will see you next week.